Hello everyone, welcome back. Happy Independence Day. It's a beautiful 4th of July today. And I want us to consider who are the people that actually fought in the American Revolution, okay? And that goes for both sides, okay? Who were the people uh, that fought in the colonies, in the colonies and who were the, fought, uh, the people that fought on the British side? And, you know, you'll be surprised that it is not necessarily what you, the people that you think it might be, okay? So, first of all, let's start with the British side because uh, people often assume that the British uh, loaded up a ship full of British uh, British soldiers, uh, you know, from the island of England and shipped them over here. And that's not the case, okay? Uh, it was the, the British Empire, right? You guys, I'm sure you guys have heard the term, the sun never set on the British Empire. Well, they had, they were all over the place, right? You know, so there was no reason why they would want to load up a boat full of soldiers from England and ship them all the way over here. Uh, why, when they can just recruit from here, right? Because to the British, you know, the colonists were British subjects. The, the people living in India were British subjects. The people living in Ireland were British subjects, okay? So, so to, 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 to the British, you know, all these places that, you know, that were British colonies around the world, these were, you know, all those people there were British subjects, uh, and they were quite comfortable in recruiting from those people, okay? So it was the British strategy, okay, to, to recruit soldiers here in the colonies to fight for them, okay? So even though some of the generals, right, or well, most of the generals would have come from, from, from England, uh, and even some of the, the soldiers and officers, but lots of soldiers were actually recruited right here in the colonies, okay? Um, and uh, in fact, uh, about a good chunk of those soldiers were, were, were black slaves, because what the British were doing is they were promising uh, freedom uh, to any black slaves that would fight for them. Okay, now the colonists were doing the same thing. Okay, uh, the colonists also were were uh, promising freedom to any blacks that would fight uh, in the American Revolution. Uh, and from what I um, what I heard in a uh, um, in a uh, uh, history course that I that I took, right, um, about. 15% of George Washington's Continental Army, 15% uh, was, was composed of, 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 of blacks that were fighting for their freedom, okay? And uh, I did not know this until I took this course. And uh, the interesting thing that, that, that I, I further found out from this is as a result of the brave fighting that those, uh, that those blacks did during the American Revolution, um, about half of the uh, most of the northern colonies uh either abolished slavery or had plans to abolish slavery as a direct result of the brave fighting that that those uh black people did uh on you know in in george washington's continental army so uh 15 percent of those people were black now uh 50 percent 50% 50 of that uh of george washington's continental army uh, was composed of of off the boat Irish people. Okay, so you had Irish people that were coming here, right? About fifty percent of his army, basically coming here, pretty much for the sole purpose of joining the Continental Army and fighting the British. Now, why on earth would they do such a thing? Well, at the time there was a famine going on in Ireland, and uh, you know people were basically blaming the British for causing this famine uh, or not helping them or, you know, how, you know, but the point is that whether it's true or not, and I'm sure it's true, uh, the uh, lots of Irish people blamed the British for, for, you know, people starving to death back in Ireland. And they came here to the colonies with the intention of killing British, okay? They didn't come here because they they saw Thomas Jefferson's Declaration of Independence and were motivated by that, right? They came here because they wanted to murder British. Okay, so so that that's giving us a lot of insight into what it takes to wanna fight a revolution. Okay, so we've got 
half of George Washington's Continental Army, which is off the boat Irish that want to murder British, okay? 15%, all right, are, are, are blacks fighting for their freedom, okay? Um, so if I do my math correct, we're basically looking at about 35% at most, okay, of the Continental Army uh, that is comprised of, 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 uh, of colonists, you know, of, of native colonists, right? People that have been here in the colonies for at least, you know, one or two generations. Uh, only about 35% of them, okay? Um, so to me, that's extremely, extremely uh, interesting. So in, you know, uh, separate from that, um, what I also heard at the time that I took this historic, this history uh, course, uh, around at the time of the American Revolution, ab about 30% of the colonists were loyalists, okay? They supported th the British. They were loyal to the British. They were against uh, the, uh, they were against this, you know, th this, this rebellion. Um, and they would have, they basically were enlisting, uh, to fight for the British, right? Um, so that, so, so again, that was, that's 30% of the, of the colonists, okay? Uh, and at the end of the American Revolution, there was actually, there were reprisals, right? Because, uh, especially in the New York City area, uh, most of the people in the, in the New York area, in the New York City area, uh, they were like almost all loyalists, and they were kicked out. Okay, they they were all sent over to Nova Scotia. They all most of them resettled in Nova Scotia, in Nova Scotia, up in Canada, um, because they were reprisals. You know, they, now uh, it's I'm sure that it was not as nice as the history books record, where they just let them leave. Uh, I'm sure that there was some beatings involved and maybe a few murders. Um, you know, I, you know, of course, a lot of that stuff probably hasn't been recorded. Um, but uh, yeah, there, there were reprisals. At the very least, we know for sure that the loyalists were kicked out. Okay, so 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 we're looking at 30 percent of the colonists uh, that were loyal to the British. About 30% were loyal to this, you know, to, to, to the cause for independence. They didn't actually fight for it, you know, but they supported uh, the breakaway from, from the British Empire, okay? And about 40% in the middle didn't give a rat's ass either way, okay? They, as long as they, you know, they had food on the table, they were happy, okay? So if the, if the British came through town, they held up British flags. If the, you know, if the Continental Army came to town, they held up Continental Army flags. Um, you know, they, they basically, they really didn't want anything to do with the war. Um, they wanted to appear like they were supporting e either side when that particular side came through town, okay? Uh, and, and this is a, a very common thing because if you don't support that, that army that's coming through town, uh, they're pretty much gonna raid you. They're gonna take everything you have, which in many cases happened Anyway, okay, it did happen. Um, uh, um, the British did very commonly take whatever they needed when they needed stuff from the colonists. Uh, George Washington uh, refrained from doing this until he kind of got to Valley Forge, right? And then things kind of got desperate over there, and then he had no choice. Uh, he gave his Continental Army permission to go out into the New Jersey area and forage, okay? Which means basically... Go door to door and take whatever you need. And uh, you can, again, lost to history, uh, but I'm sure that when these colonists showed up to people's houses to take whatever they needed, there might have been some resistance. There might have been some shooting. There might have been some dead colonists, okay? That's the nature of, 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 of a revolution, okay? That's the nature of a revolution. Um, the, the American Revolution was more of a civil war uh, then even the, the the later Civil War of the 1860s, because when we look at the American Civil War of or that started in 18 from 1860 to 18 or 1861 to 1865, that was clearly divided north against south. The states were kind of like almost like their own nations, um, and it was basically the Army of the North versus the Army of the South, uh, very clearly defined you know armies and boundaries. Uh, the you know so that, so that to me that's actually that's more of a uh, more of a, of a true war right where you have the soldiers on one side 
fighting the soldiers of the other side. Okay, the American Revolution, right? In 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 you know um, in uh, in uh, in, uh, in, uh, in opposition was actually more of a civil war because it wasn't like north and south or east or west, right? But you had people in the same towns on opposite sides, and in many cases you had townspeople fighting townspeople. Um, and uh, in many cases, they actually used the American Revolution as an excuse to kind of settle old scores, okay? Uh, so that's something interesting that I found out in this, in this course. I did. Hold on, let me pause this camera because there's a plane coming over. Ahead. Okay, so, um, now this, this concept of, you know, kind of like uh, people within the same town fighting against each other, that's something that the British were aware of, right? When I, when I took this course, one of, the, one of the things that the British were concerned about was like the entire colony is breaking out into this partisan warfare. Uh, and what they really wanted to do is they wanted to keep this a fight of between the British Army uh, and the Continental Army, right? They, they, you know, they, they wanted it to keep it like that as much as possible. They did not want it to degenerate into just partisan warfare where you had all these different groups, uh, you know, basically fighting on their own. Um, so so I, I think they, from what I recall, and I can't remember, they did take steps that I think would have sort of prevented that from happening uh, or basically in some ways kind of um, aided, you know, aided the... Um, the the colon the George Washington's Continental Army from re remaining a cohesive unit because they didn't want it to break up they wanted the Continental Army to stay together as a single army so they could fight it as a single army okay so so that was one of the concerns uh, of, of the British that that they wanted to fight a single army they didn't want to fight like you know they didn't want like all these partisan uh, militia uh, uh, militia groups all over the the, the colonies okay? so. Um, it's just some really interesting stuff that I think that uh, we should keep in mind, right? That it, it wasn't like all the colonies uniting to fight the British. That's not what happened, right? That's not how how revolutions happen. Uh, it was a very, it was a, a, a small chunk, about thirty percent, that actually supported this uh, supported independence. And within that, it was probably a lot of people say that it was. You know, uh, only 3% of the colonists that fought in the American Revolution. I would say that it was probably even a lot less than that. I would probably say it was less than 1% because uh, half of the army was off the boat Irish that were coming here just because they wanted to kill British. Okay, uh, And again, coming back to kind of what I wanted to discuss, what kind of people fight revolutions, right? So you've got pretty much desperate people, right? You got people, people desperate people with, uh, you know, even you know, even de desperate people like let's say the the uh, the slaves that were trying to gain their freedom, or people that have nothing to live for and just want to murder the other side, uh, which is kind of how I see the off the boat Irish uh, coming over here, uh, whose family were probably already dead back home. And they probably felt like they had nothing to live for. They just wanted to come here and kill British. Okay? So, in the modern day context, right, who would, who, who would fight uh, in a, a, a hypothetical uh, revolution? Okay? So, let's say you had a dictator or a tyrant uh, that took power. Who are the people that would fight in this revolution? Now, using the American Revolution um, as, you know, as a pattern, right? It's not going to be the soccer moms. Uh, it is not going to be the fat guys that are comfortable, right? It's not going to be the guys with all the Gucci guns uh, because they've got, you know, expensive equipment there that they want to protect, okay? Um, it's going to be desperate people that have nothing, okay? Um, I, if I had to guess, I would, I would guess that it would be the gangs, okay? Um, you know, Bloods, Crips. Uh, Hell's Angels, you know, outlaws, you know, all, all these, all these different gangs that that you hear about. Okay, uh, those are the ones that I think would would fight in a hypothetical uh, revolution. Uh, now, people on the outside they might support them, right? They might give them, you know, supplies. 
Um, but I don't think that they would do the fighting just because they're not that comfortable, okay? So, you, you know, the only people that, that fight in revolutions, from what I can see, uh, are desperate people, and you know, people that have nothing to lose, uh, people that are very used to breaking the, the laws, okay? Um, and, you know, and, and that's used to, that's, that's your gangs, right? Those guys are used to uh, breaking the law. So, I have a very different outlook when I look at criminals. I mean, yeah, you know, if they're, if they're trying to hurt me or hurt innocent people, yeah, I mean, I hate them. They should be stopped and all that stuff. Uh, but I also see them as, you know, if they're in a, in, a, in, a, in a tyrannical, dictatorial type of situation, I also see them as the people that I would actually fight the revolution, okay? Um, because if, if the dictator, if the tyranny is oppressing us, well, they're also going to be oppressing them, right? And those people are going to react uh, violently a lot quicker than, let's say, people like us watching this channel that are a lot more disciplined, right? Um, you know, so so some things to, for you guys to think about. You know, I'm not saying that this is the one and only way, uh, but it, it certainly is not going to be like the police and military, right? Because those guys are like all about, you know, protecting their paychecks, protecting their pensions, you know, protecting their careers, okay? Um, so it's not going to be police. It's not going to be military. If anything, those guys are going to basically go fight for the dictator. They're going to go fight for the tyrant. Um, even the ones that say that they won't, you know what? Even, even if they won't, they're not going to stop, you know, stop the others that are, right? So the ones that say that, hey, they'll never, sh you know, they'll never shoot innocent uh, civilians, yeah, maybe they won't do it, but they're not going to stop the other 90% that will. Okay, so, um, you know, so it, it's not going to be police and, mil police and military. It's not going to be soccer moms. It's not going to be all you career people out there. Uh, it is going to be the criminals. It's going to be all the people that we, that we typically lock up in jail. Those are the type of people that I think would actually fight uh, a, a revolution. And uh, we need to look no further than John Paul Jones, right? Uh, the father of the American Navy, right? The guy that uh, is famous for saying, I have only begun to fight, okay? Well, before the American Revolution, that guy was wanted for murder, right? And it wasn't, and it wasn't for murdering, uh, you know, some like British general. I mean, basically, it was just for murdering uh, another innocent person, basically, right? So, so that guy was wanted for murder. Uh, before the American Revolution. So look no further than John Paul Jones, okay? Uh, that gives you a good indication of the type of people that fight American, uh, that fight revolutions, okay? And not just here, well, around the world, right? The people that fight revolutions are generally of the, the criminal element. The guys that are usually used to murdering, used to not break, you know, to, 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 to breaking the rules, used to cheating. Uh, I mean, you can look at the uh, look, look at the communist revolution, right? In, in, in you know that happened uh, in 1917 or whenever that happened. But a lot of those people were criminals, right? It, it doesn't matter that they were fighting for communists; they were fighting a revolution. Uh, but I think you're going to see a lot of the same character, right? Whether it's people that think they're fighting for independence or people that think they're fighting for socialism, the people that pick up guns, right, or pick up arms and go fight tyrants are are basically people that are used to breaking rules and used to murdering okay those are the you know those, that's kind of like a requirement if you're going to go fight a revolution uh, it's not the rule followers okay so again the purpose of this is not to say that you guys should change what you're doing or or change your lifestyle or, or change your religion or anything like that no it's just basically a reality check i think you know Look at history, see the type of people that actually fight revolutions. Uh, you know, if anything, just, you know, give them their due respect. Okay. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all soon.